بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على نبينا محمد وعلى عليه وصحبه وسلم أما بعد حبت في الله السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته Welcome back to our study of عقيدة القيروانية and in this lesson we will talk about a very important foundation principle of Ahl Sunnati wal Jama'a with regards to the divine uh, names and attributes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and that is leaving the kafiyah, leaving the how to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, meaning we don't have this knowledge. This knowledge has not been revealed to us, and there is no benefit for us to go into the issue and to delve into it as it will not help us to come closer to Allah, but rather if we speculate and get into philosophy and take the methodology of Ahl Kalam, then perhaps we can actually be, go further away from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. During the course of this lesson, this the lesson objectives uh, will include the following three objectives. First, that the understanding or attempting to understand the concepts of exalting and sanctifying regarding Allah the Most High. The second objective is to recognize that comprehending the full extent of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's attributes is impossible, meaning to know how the kafiyah. And third, uh, during the course of this lesson, we hope that we will instill in the learner uh, a greater appreciation for the signs of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the signs of the creator of the heavens and earth, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and how reflecting on those signs show us the greatness of Allah Azawajal. He states, Nor can those who attempt to describe him perceive the reality of his divine attributes, nor can those people who contemplate, who ponder upon his divine attributes, comprehend the reality of his affair. The true persons who reflect upon his signs and they do not reflect nor contemplate upon the reality of his essence, meaning those people who are authentic, those people who are on the sunnah, those people who are not going beyond the boundaries, they reflect on the signs of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, but they don't sit and try to contemplate the the haqiqa or the the absolute reality of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's essence, meaning the how of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. For example, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Fi kitab al kareem ar rahman ala arsh istawa, the most merciful rose above the above his throne. The people of the Sunnah don't try to speculate, well, how does he rise above his throne? They don't go into those affairs. Rather, they accept the divine text. And this is a very important principle of the Salaf as which we'll get into uh, shortly. Uh, then uh, the Imam, he goes on to state, and they will never encompass anything of his knowledge except that which he wills. And this comes from, for example, ayat, in Surah uh, Baqarah, Ayat al-Kursi. His footstool extends over the heavens and the earth, he feels no fatigue in guarding and preserving them. And he is the most high, the most great. So this, uh, the imam here is mentioning some of the sifat of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And we'll go into uh, these, uh, these sifat and these names of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, his divine names and his uh, blessed and divine attributes. So the believer... Uh, must affirm the divine names and attributes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as he affirms them for himself. So Allah's uh, lofty attributes, for example, uh, the believer is obligated to believe and affirm the lofty attributes which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has described himself by in the noble Quran and the authentic sunnah of his prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam. They are obligated to affirm these attributes without negating them without distorting them, 
without making a resemblance between them and that of the creation, or questioning their modality, or questioning how they are. Those are kawaid. Those are principles of Ahlul Sunnati wal Jama'ah regarding the divine uh, names and attributes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The Ahlul Sunnah does not negate the meanings of his uh, his divine uh, names and attributes. For example, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is ar razak That's one of his divine names. He is the provider or the sustainer. So Ahlul Sunnah they affirm that divine name, Ar-Razak, meaning he provides rizq. He provides. So that, that is the implication of the sifa, of the attribute of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It's not just a name with no meaning, but it's a divine name, and its meaning is the attribute of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala spending, uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala providing for his creation. Ar-Razak, Yarzak al-Nas, Yarzak al-Khalq. Ar-Razak, the provider, provides for his creation. Provides is what? That is a verb in English. That means it's an action that is implied in the name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He is Ar-Razak, he provides rizq. So, the opposite of that is, for example, those early sects, like the Ma'atila, that we refer to in general, those sects that negate. They negated Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's uh, divine um, sifat. For example, like the Ma'atazila and the um, also the Jahmiya. So, for example, they will affirm the name of Allah. They'll say, yeah, Allah is al-Razak. And we say, yeah, okay, Allah is our razak This is the aqid of Ahl Sunnah. Because that's what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says about himself. But they say he is our razak Wala yirzak. He is the provider, but he doesn't provide. That's what it means to negate. They are negating the action of providing. Because, why do they do it? Let's understand why the Mu'attila do this. Why do the the Mu'tazila and the Jahmiya do this because they are afraid if you say that Allah is a razak and that he provides risk for his creation, it is, if, it, it is as if to them in their eyes that you are making a resemblance between Allah and his creation. Because his creation, for example, the father, he goes to work and he's providing for his family. So they're saying, hey, if the father provides then we don't say that Allah provides because we're not going to make a resemblance between Allah's creation. You understand? So they fled from making a resemblance, tashbi, and they fled from that and they went to negation. They negated Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's uh, divine attributes. For example, ar-razak, you know, ar-rizq, yarzak, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he provides. For example, the Asha'ira and the uh, Diobandis and the Maturidiya, that sects such as these, that they actually, they distort the meanings. Why? Because they feel that if you say, for example, um, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala rose above his throne, they say no, 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 because we are also like the Ma'atila, we're running from Tishbi. We're one, running from making a resemblance between Allah and His creation. And it's a good thing. We don't make uh, a resemblance between Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and His creation. But we do not negate those sifat of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala at the same. Uh, nor do we distort and we have to fit it to, to mean what our intellect tells us. Okay, hopefully that's understood. Meaning, for example, with regards to that ayah, that ayah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Ar-Rahman, Allah arsh stowa the most merciful, rose above his throne. The Asha'ira, they state that the most, instead of saying Ar-Rahman, Allah arsh stowa they read the Quran that way, but they distort 
they distort the word istoa. And there's two types of distortion. We're just going to be as brief as we can. Two types of distortion. There is distortion or ta'wil ma'nawi. And then there's ta'wil lethadi. Ta'wil ma'nawi, meaning there's a distortion regarding the meaning, meaning they change the meaning. So instead of saying Ar-Rahman ala Arsh Istoa, they say Istoa means Istola. They change the meaning of the word. Okay? Ta'wil Levdi means to change the actual word. So actually what the Asha'ira do, they do both. Because when you change the word, you change the meaning. So they say instead of estoa, they say estola. They don't read it that way as far as the meaning. So they, in fact, when they change the word as far as when they interpret the Quran, they interpret estoa to mean estola. And that's very close as far as the the word, the letters. Those letters, estoa and estola, they are very similar in the haruf, in the letters. But their meanings are vastly different. So they change the meaning. And the reason they change the meaning is because they want to make it fit with their intellect. Their intellect says, hey, if you affirm this as it is, as Allah said, then that means we're making a resemblance between him and his creation. So what they are doing is a lot of their... Um, Akita, their creed is based on inferences. You know, it has it basically has a speculative uh, element to it. And we'll talk further about that in some of our other lessons. So while the believers should affirm the lofty attributes of Allah, they should desist from contemplating their reality, nor should they engage in rational speculation or intellectual conjecture about their reality. Saying, oh, well, it must mean be like this. Allah must rise above his throne like this. Allah must descend, as the Prophet wasallam said, like this. Well, it's this time in China. It's this time in Seattle. It's this time in London. So it must be like this. No. Ahl Sunnah closes the door to all of that speculation. Um, this means avoiding attempts to deduce or analyze these attributes solely based on human reasoning or philosophical thinking as such approaches may lead to misinterpretation and deviation. And that's the point there. Uh, also, from those principles that we were mentioning, is making a resemblance between Allah's attributes and His creation. So, Teshbi. Teshbi is, re is re in reference to making a resemblance between Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, and His creation, or and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala negates that. And we'll get into those as we get into the treaties, because Imam uh, Ibn Abi Zaid, he, he gives us, uh, he details some of these matters. And so, we know Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, basir. There's nothing that resembles him. So there's negating of tashbi, and that's what Ahl Sunnah does, negates tashbi. basir. And he is all hearing and all seeing. So, we say, Ahlul Sunnah says that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, as he says about himself, he hears and sees. His hearing is perfect. His sight is perfect and complete. We hear and see, but our hearing and sight is not like Allah's. Very simple. Elephants hear, but our hearing is not like elephants. Cats hear. If you watch the, the way their ears twitch when they're listening, they hear things we don't hear. They can hear the mouse in the wall. And we may or may not even be able to hear that. Or dogs, the hearing of dogs. All of these creatures of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala have, have a similar attribute of hearing, but their how they hear, the kafiya is different. And the levels, they follow it. They have different levels of hearing different abilities. But we say, yes, they listen to sound. 
this is within the this diversity is within the creation so that is why we it is impossible for us to make a resemblance between the creator who negates that there's a resemblance and who who possesses perfect and divine attributes to our created and simple attributes yes we hear and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala hears but his hearing is not like our hearing so hopefully that's clear so the impossibility of fully understanding the true nature of Allah's attributes. So the author, the Imam, he said, nor can those who attempt to describe him perceive the reality of his divine attributes. Knowledge of Allah's lofty attributes and understanding their true essence is beyond our perception as our intellects are incapable of comprehending their true nature. As our minds have limitation and boundaries and cannot encompass the infinite. Therefore, those who acknowledge what is required of them and admit their inability to go beyond these boundaries have recognized the truth and have placed fairness in its proper place. That's a very important uh, statement letting us know that from wisdom, hikmah is wada shafi mudu'ihi. Hikmah in the Arabic language, it means to put everything in its proper place. So when a person puts their intellect in their proper place in that they know their limitations, I can't, even if a non-Muslim or a philosopher wants to debate with me and wants to ask me, you know, well, how is a law? I can't, I can't open that door. I can't answer that. I say he is how he describes himself and he has not given us knowledge that knowledge, that knowledge we don't speculate about. We don't make use mathematical calculations to deduce or philosophical interpretations and speculation. We can't do that with the divine names and attributes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Rather, we stop where the divine nasus stopped. And it's worth noting uh, the beautiful or mentioning the athar of Imam Malik, rahmatullah alayhi rahmatin wasiya. So a man asked uh, Imam Malik while he was teaching in the Prophet Wasallam's masjid. He said, Ya Abu Abdullah, O father of Abdullah, uh, istawa? You know, he, he, he asked him about Ar-Rahman ala Arsh istawa, the most merciful rose above his throne. <clears throat> so he asked him about it. And Imam Malik, he began to sweat profusely as it is mentioned in some narrations and put his head down. And he raised his head and he said, the <clears throat> al-istawa ma'lum, wa kayf majhul, wa su'al anhu bid'a, wa an ara anta mubtadi'a, and he threw him out of his gathering. So he said, al-kayf, he said, al-istawa ma'lum. He said, istawa, the word istawa, it's known. Meaning it's known in the Arabic language and it's known that it means irtifa, it means to raise up or ascend. We know the meaning. al ma'lum. He said, well, cave majhul, but the how is unknown to us. We don't know the how that Allah does this. We don't know the details and the intricacies. We don't know that. We just know he rose above his throne as he says. And he says, <clears throat> And asking about it is an innovation. Do you see how the Salaf used to close the door? Look how Imam Malik, <clears throat> this is an invaluable narration and a very strong hujjah, uh, form of, of, of hujjah, of dalil from argumentation and rational thought derived from the book and the sunnah. Imam Malik is, 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 is coming with strength to defeat and close the door to religious innovation and speculation about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's divine names and attributes. Al-Kayf Majhul wa su'al anhu bid'a. And asking about it is a bid'a. And he says, and I think you're a mubtadi'a. And ara anta mubtadi'a. I think that you're a belief, a, a, a mubtadi'a, an innovator in the religion of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And he threw him out, had him thrown out of the, his, his, uh, study circle. 
So this is a powerful uh, ether of the Selef showing us how the Selef affirmed the names of and attributes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and didn't delve into knowledge that they didn't have knowledge of. <clears throat> For example, the Kafia. So Imam uh, Abu Muhammad Abdullah ibn Abi Zayd al-Qirawani rahmatullahi alayhi rahmatin wazi, he also said, the all-knowing, the all-aware. So after that, he mentioned some of the other attributes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The all-knowing, the all-aware, the disposer of affairs, the all-powerful, the all-hearing, the all-seeing, the most high, the most great. And indeed, he is above his mighty throne in his essence. And he is omnipotent <clears throat> uh, in his, his knowledge. So here, the imam <clears throat> is affirming other uh, divine Asma al Husna, divine names of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And also, that comes along with that, those sifat, those attributes, such as Ilm, Al Alim, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the all knowing. And He is, He's Al Alam al Khabir, Wal Mudabbir al Qadir. You know, He is the. <coughs> the disposer of affairs, the all-aware, the all-powerful, the all-hearing and all-seeing, the most high, the most great. All of those names and some of those we, we did explain already. <clears throat> and indeed, he's above his mighty throne in his essence. So here we see the imam is affirming the itiqad of ahl sunnati wal jama'ah. And that is affirming the divine names and attributes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, affirmed them. And they neg Ahl Sunnah negates what Allah negates. And they affirm what the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam affirmed in authentic narrations. And they negate what the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam negated in authentic narrations. Finally, I want to end with what Imam Ibn Kathir Rahmatullahi alayhi rahmatin wasiya said regarding the throne of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the arsh. In his tafsir, he says, this is the verse of the throne. He was explaining ayatul kursi. He says, and it holds great significance. The hadith about the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam stating that it is the greatest verse in the Quran is well established. Imam Ahmed reported that Ibn Kaab, who was asked by the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, which verse in the Quran is the greatest? He replied, "Allah and His Messenger know best." The Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam repeated the question several times, and each time Ibn Kab answered the verse of the throne, ayatul uh, kursi. The Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam then said, "Congratulations on your knowledge." So it shows us how alim ayatul kursi is but that how alim the throne is and that is one of the most the most prized uh, creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala one of the greatest creations of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the almighty to accept our good and forgive our evil protect us from kulli sumu makru bless us with ikhlas with habat and until our next uh, lesson assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh